So is it possible to unlock legend levels in Dying Light 2 right from the start? I'm talking right from the moment that you can free roam Old Villador without progressing any further into the story. Well, that's what I wanted to find out, so I decided to give it a go. I'll be looking into how easy it is to find inhibitors early on, whether it's possible to defeat GRE anomalies right at the start of the game, and later in the video I cover my main methods for maxing out the combat and parkour skill trees, so if you want to jump to any particular topic in this video, then you'll find it split into chapters in the description below. Okay, so at the end of my first Dying Light 2 playthrough, in which I largely stuck to the story, I still had only a measly level 4 character, and an inventory full of crappy weapons, which made the final showdown with Waltz a bit of a struggle to be honest. So, I think it's fair to say that playing through the story alone is not the best way to level up in this game. And because you actually could unlock legend levels at the start of the original Dying Light, it was only natural to want to see if it was possible to do the same in the sequel. However, in the original game, you only needed to max out one of the skill trees to unlock legend levels, and in Dying Light 2, you actually have to reach rank 9 and max out both the combat and parkour skill trees, and attempting to do this using only the old Villador map was probably not going to be easy, if even possible at all, but I was pretty confident that it could be done. So, just how early on in the game can we start to level up? Well, if this is your first time playing the game, then you will want to complete the prologue, as of course it sets up the whole story. This does, however, take around 90 minutes or so to complete, but you will start to gain XP for both the combat and parkour skill trees in the process, which are completely empty to start with. You can't free roam during the prologue as you haven't reached Villador yet and the map option isn't even highlighted at this stage, and you also have virtually nothing in your inventory apart from a couple of gear items. If this is your second playthrough, then you'll probably want to completely skip the prologue and every cutscene, which saves you a lot of time. If you choose to take this option, then the first two skills and the first level of health are already unlocked, as you would have achieved this by playing through the prologue. You also have a small assortment of weapons and resources too, but you still only have the same level 2 gear armour. The map option is available now, but it's stuck in this zoomed in mode and you cannot free roam yet, as every time you try and go off exploring you get a prompt telling you that you are leaving the mission area, so you have no choice but to follow Hakon. In fact, you cannot actually start free roaming until you've completed both the Getting Stronger and the Markers of the Plague quests, and that also takes around 45 minutes to complete. So, if you play the prologue plus these two quests, you're looking at almost two and a half hours before free roam is unlocked, or around 45 minutes if you skip the prologue. Once Hakon gives you the binoculars and you've identified the Alder Windmill and the Bazaar, he then leaves you and you can do whatever you like now within the confines of the old Villador map. And finally, at this point, the challenge can start, and it will be undertaken entirely within the Only Way Out chapter from start to finish. I still made my way to the bazaar first, though, as it's a perfect base for this challenge because there's both a craftmaster and a merchant right next to a stash and resting place, and there's also some really easy ways to level up right on the doorstep here, too. You'll see the quest marker says talk to the people of the bazaar, but you don't actually have to speak to any of them, as the quest automatically switches to meet Hakon later in the day anyway. The first thing I did was visit my stash as all the DLC is now unlocked, and I have a modest selection of cool weapons and gear items that could now be redeemed that would give me a massive advantage over the weak selection in the inventory at this stage of the game. And as this challenge is ultimately to see if it's possible to unlock legend levels at the start of the game, I think it's reasonable to want to make the journey much less tedious wherever possible, and having some OP weapons and decent gear armour is definitely going to help reduce the time it will take to get there. The Soul Harvester weapon from the Scarecrow bundle was almost 10 times more powerful than any other weapon in my inventory, and it would last much longer than any of them before breaking too. And after equipping all of my Stay Human gear items, I jumped from level 2 to level 18 in an instant. Tempting as it was though to go straight outside and bash some Volatiles in the face, I had virtually no health or stamina yet, and the Volatiles were way too tanky to beat easily, even with a powerful DLC weapon. I would still gain XP in the process of trying, but without more inhibitors and some basic skills, it was going to be a real struggle to level up quickly like this. And it goes without saying that trying to finish the challenge using level 1 weapons would take a very long time indeed. So, how many inhibitors are there in the old Villador map? Well, on top of the three that I picked up in the Markers of the Play quest, there's actually another 40 available here. 
but I wouldn't need to find all of them. As you can see, Aiden has 100 points in both health and stamina at this point, and you only need 240 health to unlock the highest combat skill, and 260 stamina to unlock the highest parkour skill. And every upgrade gives you 20 points to allocate to either skill tree. And on top of that, you get an extra 20 points for both health and stamina with each player rank too, which would in theory mean that you could unlock every skill just by ranking up. Although, I think it may be capped without inhibitors, so let me know in the comments if that's true. Of course, attempting the whole challenge with no stamina and very little health would just be ridiculous unless you're a bit of a masochist. So, I decided that reaching at least level 5 for both health and stamina would give me a much better chance of breezing through the challenge without too much effort. And as each upgrade requires 3 inhibitors, and I was going to need 8 upgrades to reach that level, that meant I needed to find 24 inhibitors. So, this seemed like a good place to start the challenge. And simply running around the map from one location to another and doing things like helping survivors, defeating bandits or unlocking safe zones would also start contributing to my XP as I went. Some of the inhibitor locations are guarded by hordes of enemies during the day and often only give up one inhibitor so it's best to start with the ones that are literally just there for the taking like this one next to the large windmill. It's only a stone's throw away from the bazaar and you can literally just walk through the window and bag two inhibitors straight away without any bother from the zombies. Now you'll notice that I was able to upgrade just then and the reason for that is because I actually went to a GRE anomaly straight from the bazaar but then I decided it would probably be better to show a kind of circuit of easy inhibitors around the map so I'll show you what happened there in the next chapter. Next I headed to this location on the border of Helmfield and crept down into this metro station. It is full of zombies and if you alert any of them then all hell breaks loose. So it's not worth all that when there's only one inhibitor in here, but it's easy enough to just sneak by all of them and then just sneak back out again without any issues. From here I could see the chimney of the Helmfield electrical station and that was where the next inhibitor location is. It's only a few minutes away and the GRE crate is submerged in the water by these yellow pipes and again it only gives a single inhibitor but that's four so far all collected in around 10 minutes. The next waypoint I set was in this unknown location which is actually a night runner hideout in this small chapel like building. There's another single inhibitor inside the safe and the code for it can be found in the secret room behind the wardrobe inside this container and I also got 250 parkour XP just for unlocking the safe zone too. A little further up next to this unknown location is a military container and approaching from this direction avoids alerting a howler down by the convoy on the street. Again there's only one inhibitor in here and it's not worth fighting hordes of virals over when you can just climb in unnoticed. The next spot is very close by but a bit more involved this time as this bandit camp is going to become a mini side quest for the next inhibitor. If you clear out the camp then the bandits just respawn every time you return but if you run the short distance from here to the alder windmill then once activated you'll see that it says additional survivor structures are now unlocked in the area and when you return to the bandit camp now it looks much more hospitable and the chap I was looking for was around the other side of the building. The quest is the first biomarker and the guy gives you a little note with some riddles to solve to open a safe which is located in that building. Once you retrieve the biomarker and return to the NPC he'll give you the inhibitor. Ok that one was less straightforward but it's a nice little distraction despite only giving one inhibitor. Next I was looking for a shop roughly here on the map and it's this chicken pie next to the forsaken store. The GRE crate is located on the first floor and is accessed through this window. You don't even have to be too sneaky as there's plenty of time to grab them before the zombies come shuffling over. This crate has three inhibitors and that brought the total collected in this circuit, not including the GRE anomaly, to 10 altogether and it only took around 30 minutes from leaving the bazaar to this point. So that's a good selection of the easiest inhibitors that can be found straight away. And from here, the next logical step was this GRE anomaly just east of the bazaar in Trinity. Of course, GRE anomalies are nighttime challenges, but I wouldn't advise making your way there at night, as there's always a possibility that a volatile will follow you in, and that will make life very difficult for you. 
The best way to beat an anomaly quickly is to wait by the container hatch for nightfall, as when it comes, the Revenant just pops up like toast from a toaster, and you can ambush him immediately and kill him before he can even reanimate any zombies. And you're rewarded with 2 inhibitors and 1500 combat XP without having to do very much at all. The second one is in Quarry End, and that is in fact the one I did first, as I thought that would be the easiest given that it's a smaller space, but using the ambush technique it turned out to be no easier than the Trinity one. But I was really surprised at just how quickly it could be done. There is a third anomaly site in Houndfield, but that one is a level 4 challenge, so I left that one until I'd ranked up to level 2, thinking it would give me a bit of a better chance but it turned out I was still able to beat this one in less than a minute. And it was at this moment that some random dude invaded my game, as I hadn't even realised that I had my online options set to public, and for a worrying moment I thought he'd taken my bloody inhibitors. But they were still there for me thankfully, and I promptly booted him and set my game to private again. You get a whopping 3500 XP for beating this one, but still only two inhibitors, so that's 16 in total now. And once you've beaten all of the anomalies, these sites become repeatable challenges called GRE Aberrations. Sadly, just waiting by the hatch for him to pop out at night doesn't work anymore because you can only activate these challenges using the poster on the gate. And it goes without saying that this really is a challenge too far so early on in the game. So despite the prize of 2000 XP and some artifact weapons, the risk far outweighs the benefit of this level to be honest. But I wasn't entirely sure just how much XP was given without giving it a go though, so I was very glad that I had Hakon's crossbow with me to even the odds a little. Now there are another 8 inhibitors available from the 2 GRE quarantine buildings in Old Vidador, and I started with the level 1 building in the Horseshoe Territory first. Again, rather than making your way there at night, you can just wait on the roof for night to fall, and then simply unlock the door and walk in without needing to worry about any volatiles. It is a good idea though to unlock any safe zones nearby for when you come out again, as you really don't want to lose any XP by getting killed. Once inside, there's a fair amount of zombies and a few virals, and rather than go on the stealth route, I decided to just fight them uh, to gain some more combat XP along the way. To be honest though, the biggest threat at this stage is running out of immunity, so if you've managed to loot or buy some boosters before entering, then have it ready to use and keep an eye on the meter. There are some immunity boosters lying around in the building too, but I still wouldn't bother trying to open these crates with all of the toxic gunk around them, as that really drains your immunity quickly. So, there's one inhibitor on each of the first two floors, and another two in the final container, and on top of that you get 1000 combat XP and 1000 parkour XP, so it's well worth doing for a big boost to your progress. The second GRE building is a level 4 challenge though, and there are more zombies and virals on the first two floors, and this one has a goon on the ground floor, but it was still pretty easy and bagged me 2500 XP for both skill trees, so again, well worth doing, and according to my earlier calculations, that should have been all of the inhibitors I needed. For some reason though, my health was still only at level 4 after upgrading, despite showing that I'd collected 27 inhibitors in total, so I was a bit confused to be honest. And the task ahead was really beginning to dawn on me now, as I had only just reached rank 2, and uh, yeah, it was looking like a very, very long way to go before getting anywhere near maxing out both skill trees at this stage. The GRE building in Trinity also doubles as a firearms challenge, which is the only way you can use firearms right at the start unless you buy one from the in-game store. You can only unlock all of the guns in the game by completing the Lost Armory quest, and that can only be accessed via the central loop, which of course is unavailable at this stage. If however you choose the GRE challenge, then you go in equipped with a pistol, a rifle, SMG and a shotgun, but you have limited ammo and the amount of XP awarded really didn't justify spending much time in here during the challenge, uh, beyond just checking it out. There's another gun challenge not far from here at this location on the map, but this time you have to loot firearms from the crates around the challenge zone and defeat three demolishers, which of course does take a bit of practice, so I decided this one definitely wasn't worth it at this point. I couldn't resist buying the Volcatronics rifle though, as it was on offer, and it's actually really good fun headshotting biters and virals like a proper old school zombie game. 
but it still wasn't really that effective against volatiles to be honest at this stage at least and again did little to help level up so it was about time I went back to the bazaar and started doing some hardcore nighttime combat if I wanted to complete this challenge anytime soon. I decided to go after some of the harder inhibitors first though and eventually got to level 5 health and I decided to go one higher to level 6 on stamina so I should now be tough enough to get through the rest of the challenge. <laughs> Uh, now, a good way to maximise combat XP potential is to keep going back to the merchant in the bazaar and buying any gear items that award higher combat XP. If he doesn't have what you need, then just go to sleep and go back to him and his stock will have changed. And also, I decided to take advantage of this nocturnal weapon. It gave an extra 40% XP when killing infected at night and can deal nearly 50% more damage to volatiles. It wasn't as powerful as my Soul Harvester and it took a while to take out volatiles early on, but they become more powerful every time you rank up, of course, and when fully upgraded, they have no problem at all in dealing some serious damage. So. Once I was all set, I just went outside and got the attention of a volatile to start a chase. The entrance to this subway by the bazaar is the perfect place to do volatile farming, as you can take advantage of the UV light here. It really helps to keep them from overwhelming you, and it also prevents nocturnal weapons from draining your immunity too quickly. And as you only need a small amount of XP to level up to begin with, you can start filling up the skill tree pretty quickly on this spot, and easily level up at least once in a single night cycle. And as you unlock more skills, the process obviously gets much easier. So the reason it's best to do this at night is that you can earn one and a half times the XP and even more with each chase level, up to a maximum of three times XP at a level four chase. Unlike the original game though, you cannot earn more XP by changing the difficulty setting to hard at the time of making this video at least. Whether or not that will change when they finally release nightmare mode though remains to be seen. You do still run the very real risk of losing all of your XP when you die at night, so you really need to keep an eye on your health to avoid that happening, as it's pretty sickening when it does. You also build up a big stash of valuables and trophies this way, which comes in very handy for buying gear and upgrading your weapons, etc. But do not be tempted to use the sell all valuables option at the merchants, as mutation samples and pilgrims chests also go into this section, and you really don't want to lose that stuff. Of course it is a bit tedious selling every item individually, but you will benefit a great deal from saving those mutation samples for later. So as I levelled up, I was able to afford to repair and upgrade all of my broken weapons and killing everything became much much easier. And I ventured a little bit further out as I got more confident to try and get the chase level all the way up to level 4. As levelling up requires increasingly more XP each time and it takes way too long if you just stick to using a level 1 chase. Every time the chase is about to end, you can keep it going just by running a little circuit around the entrance to attract more virals, and that will keep the chase going for much longer, you build up a massive amount of XP that way, and if you manage to survive the night then you get a really good nighttime bonus on top. Now I'm not going to lie, this did take a very very long time, I'm talking hours and hours and hours stuck in this one location, but I was able to eventually max out my combat skill tree using entirely this method in this one location. So it does work and it was quite fun I have to say, but um, yeah it's not something that's uh, a very quick process. <laughs> That was nothing compared to how long the parkour grind turned out to be though, as running around the map and helping survivors, defeating bandits or unlocking safe zones might be fun ways to gain XP, but the amount of XP awarded for them is pretty small and it would take forever to max out the skill tree this way, as the amounts required between levels starts to go up into the tens of thousands. And even the parkour challenges still give pretty small rewards. Fortunately though, there are a couple of neat grinding methods back at the bazaar, and so after equipping as much gear that awarded parkour XP as possible, I stepped out into the garden area here, as this was where I was going to try and level up first. It's actually much safer doing it here than doing it outside, because obviously you're going to attract the attention of volatiles. You do need to unlock the far jump skill for this method, as it gives a decent amount of XP, doesn't use any stamina, and for some reason you can actually still use it inside the safe zones. All you need to do is far jump from every fence and wall in a circuit around the garden over and over, and to begin with you can easily level up a couple of times in one night cycle using this method alone. Unfortunately though, you do not get a nighttime bonus if you stay inside the garden area. 
and as the amount of XP you need for each level gets higher and higher, it gets very tedious. So when boredom started to set in, it was time to use some of my resources to craft some UV bars and to venture outside for a much more exciting way of doing things, but obviously much more dangerous. The perfect spot for this is also just outside the bazaar, but on the opposite side of the church this time. Uh, if you head outside using the door behind the Craftmaster, the place you need is just up on the roof of this building, and it's a pretty straightforward route to get there too. And once you're up there, this is the spot. Uh, basically, it's just a case of far jumping again, but this time from one roof to another using the yellow net fencing. The opposite roof is higher, but if you aim for in between the yellow fences on that side, then you don't get stuck in a hanging animation that basically slows you down when a volatile is on your ass. Uh, there's also a handy UV zone right there in front of you with a merchant if you need to make a quick escape and to top up your inventory. All I needed to do now was start a high level chase and to try and stay alive long enough to seriously level up my parkour skills. Even when fully upgraded, the UV bars didn't last that long though and the toughness boosters weren't always available at the merchants either, and also, even if they were, didn't have very high stats. So it wasn't easy staying out here for a very long time at first, um, especially if I messed up the jump and fell into the alleyway. Uh, there really weren't much point trying to climb back up because, yeah, the likelihood of losing your XP was pretty high. Whenever that happened though, it was just best to call it quits and run around the corner through the tunnel and back to safety. I found that this was normally a good time to go back into the bazaar and sleep to bank the XP as nighttime bonus is still awarded this way and you can just go back to night and do it all over again without the risk of losing a huge amount of XP all in one go. As I got better at it though I was able to take out volatiles during my circuits and that also helped on the valuables front so I could stay well equipped for the final push towards the end of the challenge. And finally, after 44 hours from start to finish, I'd maxed out both skill trees and proved that you really can unlock legend levels without progressing any further into the story. As you can see, the quest marker still says meet Hakon and the chapter is still the only way out. And now it was time to see how much all of those mutation samples I'd saved throughout this 44 hours were worth. Of course, they can be used to buy legend levels from the Craftmaster, and that was why it was so important not to sell them by mistake. In fact, I was able to level up to legend level 40 in an instant by trading them and my trophies in, and after opening all of my 39 legend chests, I was then able to level up again to level 42 without doing a thing. And on top of that, I now had an arsenal of artifact and legendary weapons in my stash to boot, but was all this worth the 44 hour grind. Of course it's more than a little impractical to play the game for longer than it would take to finish the story just to POP right at the start of it, and it did start to become a real struggle to keep going about halfway through the challenge if I'm honest. I would definitely recommend using these methods to get at least a decent amount of inhibitors and skills under your belt though, as I really noticed a big difference in ability against even the volatiles, and it made going out at night a little less tense knowing that I could kill them without too much effort. So is this something that you'd be interested in trying for yourself, or do you prefer just playing through the story and doing side quests as you go to level up? Let me know in the comments as always, and if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.